So here we are, another video on the old Z06. As you saw, we've kind of done a little bit of cleaning of the engine bay. That's more so for, you know, we're gonna put a pretty much a brand new motor in here, untested. Um, I felt cleaning it up a little bit, you know, that way, if there is any leaks, it'd be quicker to identify. You're not dealing with old grime that's on the block, I mean, on the frame. So it cleaned up really well, but the bigger project today is pulling the dry sump tank. A standard wet sump car, not a big deal, right? Because when you pull the motor, the oil pan is directly connected to the engine. So when they take the engine apart, they're gonna clean the oil pan naturally. With a dry sump car, you have the oil pan, but majority of your oil lives in the dry sump tank. So we need to make sure that before we connect a brand new virgin motor in this thing, that that dry sump tank has no residue, no remnants of its past life. So we're gonna take that tank out, we're gonna clean it out, and then on top of that, we're gonna install the Aviade uh, dry sump baffle in the uh, dry sump tank. So let's kind of jump into why we're doing that part. Inside the dry sump tank, we're gonna be installing this basically right here, which is in it's from Aviade. I don't know the pronunciation. I'll link the part in the description, but this is a dry sump baffle inside the dry sump tank. Now, in most cars, kind of like a wet sump type setup, you hear about a lot of cars adding, adding additional baffling, stuff like that, to increase the scraping of the oil. Uh, basically, when you're out on track and your car's moving G's left to right, you start to create a sloshing effect where the oil's kind of bouncing. So the pickup is picking up less and less theoretically because it's just kind of bouncing around. Think about if you're trying to scoop a cup of water out of a moving pool, it's not really gonna pick up a whole lot of water. So the, the baffles tend to help with that. Now the car is getting improved racing uh, scraper and baffle kit that's gonna be installed by the engine builder. But I'm gonna take it a step further and actually put the dry sump one as well. And the reason being is because on a dry sump car, you're basically only running about a quart of oil actually in your oil pan. Majority of your oil is sitting inside that dry sump tank. And that same sloshing effect theoretically can occur in the dry sump tank. So to kind of help with all that, make sure there's never ever an instance of oil starvation out on track or spirit driving or anything like that, primarily out on track. But if for any reason, while I'm at it, I'm gonna to try to help improve its ability to have as much lubrication as possible and make sure the motor stays as healthy as possible. So that's why we went with the K-Tech oil pump. Like I said, we have the improved racing baffle and scraper going in on it, windage tray going in on it. And then we have this, the Aviade dry sump baffle. So it is a little bit of a lengthy process to get the dry sump out. We do gotta clean that out before we put this. So let's jump into it. Let's pull this dry sump out of here. Let's see what we find inside of it and go from there. All right, so the dry sump line, the dry sump tank is pretty much back here, right up on the top here. You can't really see my hand, but right in the back passenger corner of the, of the engine bay. Uh, to access the dry sump panel, you basically gotta take the wheel off. Obviously, there's a couple little small clips we gotta pull off right here to gain access to the main sump. Now, you do have two lines. My motor's out, so those lines are already disconnected. These lines run directly to the oil pan. One thing to note, guys, that is not spoken about very often is when you're doing an oil change on a dry sum car, you're gonna see most guys do this, the traditional, uh, depending on you have, if you have the uh, 08 and less or up, where you either have the eight or 10 quart setup, um, they're gonna tell you to do the typical start it up, let it idle, test it, you know, make before you check the oil levels. But what they don't tell you is these dry sump lines right down here, it's really hard to see. These dry sump lines here actually have oil in them. So I tested that in a previous video that I saw from another YouTuber. And you, when you're doing your oil change, just disconnect those lines real quick and empty that out. Cause what you're basically doing is you're putting in your brand new oil in there and you're running probably maybe you know, I, I can't say the amount, but you're running some volume of old oil kind of mixed in there with that. So make sure you disconnect those lines when you're uh, doing your dry, when you're doing your oil change and you're just gonna get a better, cleaner oil experience. But enough yapping, let's get this panel taken off and let's start taking this tank out. So it was 215s. These are the 13s to the dry sump lines. I basically lined both lines side by side. They're kind of in the same placement they would be. There's a 10 right up at the very top. 
and then the two tens by the harnesses and now the dry sump is pretty loose um, I had to stop for a minute and remove the quick jacks I was using the quick jacks I figured hey I, I love the safety of how high the car gets and how sturdy it is but they kept getting in the way the dry sump bolts there's two 15s down here one was completely under the dry sump tank which is making the, the, the job a lot harder so now with the dry with the uh, quick jacks out I got to jack up on the subframe and we're going to start wiggling this thing and see if it's got enough room to uh, come out. Got it out. It was uh, not easy. I ended up having to loosen my, uh, my side skirts and the bottom of my fender, just kind of give it some play at the bottom. Um, but it's out. Let's figure out what the next steps are. When well, the dry sump is out, we've got to go through a specific process to put the dry sump baffle in this tank. We basically got to mark before we take this thing apart. But first things first, I'm just going to clean this guy, get it all cleaned up. On the outside, I will mark to begin the opening process and then clean the inside of it, slap this bad boy back in there, and then go through the nightmare of what is putting this dry sump back in the car. Obviously everyone knows it's always easier to rip things out than it is to put things back in. So let's see how this goes. We gotta give this a thorough cleaning, make sure it's ready for that LS7 when it's back. So let's start the cleaning process of the outside of the tank. Clean the outside of the tank, it's not necessarily that big of a deal because let's be realistic. First pass it takes on this motor is gonna be covered in scum again. But I figure while I'm here, might as well give it a little scrub down, clean it up a little bit. Again, just kind of eliminating once the engine is running and you're doing that initial, you know, kind of checking out the bugs, making sure that the engine's running not leaking from anywhere. Those things can happen, especially on a new build. This just kind of makes diagnosis a little bit easier because you're not looking at something and questioning, oh, was that there before or was it not? So this is just kind of me just trying to get that new car feeling again. All right, so the first step they basically want us to do is just kind of mark where the top and the need to mark. So I'm gonna put a little V right here. And I'm going to put a V right here. So I know these two kind of go together. And you know what? Just to be sure, just in case that one wipes somehow, we're going to add a circle and a circle on the tank there. So let's start taking it apart, cleaning out the insides, and then put in that baffle. Encourage the separation. All right. So not sure if you can see it, but you see that? That's kind of what we want to clean out. We don't want those nice and grimes in there. We want this thing to be brand new. Now this does have to go through the baffle. That's why I specifically pulled it out. Um, let's see if I can get you a shot inside the tank. Um, drain the rest of this little bit of oil that's in there. There's actually a little bit left. And here, actually I'm look, just looking at it here. I could see some metals just kind of hanging out or like, not, not metals, but contamination, better said. Let's get you a closer look. So switching over my phone here, uh, so you can kind of get a glimpse into here and I don't gotta take my camera off the tripod. And also gives me a chance to try this prologue on the iPhone 16. But you see that grime there. You see a little bit of residual oil, no big deal there. Um, we're gonna go ahead and clean this thing out, make it look brand new, wipe it down really well. 
and uh, put it back together. I want you guys to see this. Let me get a, a light to it. This thing is full of grime, like loaded with grime. This is what I don't want running through my motor. Well, this fits a lot better this way. So it's a flange up. All right, so I had it wrong. So I had it, let me get it to focus. So the actual flange is on the top side. I probably should have checked that before. Let's try this again. And she is in. Yep. Where is that slot? All right, right here. So we're basically going to realign it. Hmm. Finding me a little more this time. Got to get it to seat within the baffle. There you go. And it's in. So that's it. We got the dry sump tank reinstalled with the Aviaid. Um, insert, dry some insert. I didn't connect the lines because I'm going to let those kind of bleed out a little slowly here and clean those a bit more thoroughly. Um, but it's all set up. It's actually not too bad to get it in. It took me longer to take it out than put it back in. Um, but next couple steps is probably just getting this car a bit more prepped. I'm going to rewrap some of these wires, clean that up because some of them have seen better days with all the heat this engine produces. And other than that, in preparation for the motor arriving, there's not a whole lot more. I'm going to swap out to the Goodyear supercars in a couple days. So I'll be doing that this week. And then I got a couple other parts there, uh, AMT engine mounts, AMT diff mounts. I may or may not do a diff mount, uh, depending on time and stuff like that, before the engine gets here. If not, it's not a big deal. It doesn't, it's not impacted by the motor being in or out of the car. I have new uh, braided brake lines, but I'm kind of waiting since we'll be messing with the suspension and you know the, the disc and stuff can kind of rest a bit while we're putting the motor in and aligning everything. I might just wait um, to do that after the engine's in. So in case I do damage a line, it's the old line, not the new ones. And then what else do I got there? I got my E85 flex fuel kit. That actually will be done before the motor gets back in. So probably the next couple of weeks, that's probably be the next thing you see is wiring the E85 uh, flex fuel sensor and getting that all prepped up while the engine's out and have a lot of space to run the wires properly. So if you watched this far, make sure you like and subscribe. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.